Over the last 40 years, we've seen racing games come in all shapes and sizes. Some have four wheels, others have two, and even fewer have none at all. Sometimes they take place on the water or in the sky, while other times you're racing across a regular old dinner table. From tightly contained courses to epic open worlds, it can often feel like we've played every type of racing game under the sun. But I don't care how hardcore of a race fan you are, because I guarantee that you've never played one like Drawer. It's a clever new game that chooses to kick us right out of the driver's seat, opting instead to focus more on the pre-race planning than fancy steering. <laughs> what could this possibly mean? Well, I guess you're just going to have to stick around for our review to find out. You won't need a fancy steering wheel or prior experience to be good at drawer, because the only thing you need to master in this new racing game is the ability to draw a line. That's right, a line. You see, this is a game that's all about drawing out a path and watching the car go. The only steering you do is when you draw out twists and turns on graph paper, just hoping for the best when it comes to dodging obstacles and making it to the finish line. In some ways, this is both a lot easier and harder than you might expect. And the nice thing is that we're given a picture of the course as we draw the line. We also know where the start and finish lines are, which is extremely helpful when it comes to creating a path. But even with all this help, it's hard to draw the turns and keep your car within the narrow lines. You'll likely have to draw and then redraw the lines multiple times in order to find the perfect path and earn one of the trophies. In that sense, drawer can sometimes feel more like a puzzle game than a traditional racer. Now, when I tell you that you don't have any direct control over the car when it's driving, well, that's not entirely true. While you can't steer or get off the path you've drawn, we are given a limited amount of control over the speed to make things a little bit fairer. That is to say that you can pull the emergency brake to slow down around tough corners or use a nitro burst to speed up during straight stretches. This can help you fix some of your bad planning on the fly, but don't feel like you can just rely on these speed adjustments because you only have a few seconds to complete each of these levels. If you can get to the finish line in time, you'll open up a new stage and come one step closer to mastering all 37 courses. These different tracks are all contained in four different areas, each of which has their own backgrounds and obstacles. For example, there's a challenging Christmas-themed stage at night that'll force you to avoid traffic as well as a tropical setting where we're driving on sand and jumping over pools of water. You'll also have to avoid hay bales, dangerous cliffs, and even cows standing in the middle of the road. A lot of this is tough to anticipate from just looking at the picture, so seeing the race play out is often key when it comes to mapping out the right path. Now, what's especially cool is that you can sometimes cheat the system by ignoring the road altogether. There was one stage that took me 15 seconds to complete, yet I couldn't help but notice that all the other people on the leaderboard were finishing the level in a fraction of that time. I quickly realized that with a little luck, I could cut through the forest and skip nearly 10 seconds of the course. There were a lot of shortcuts and secrets for those who aren't afraid to experiment. That adds a whole new dimension to the game, especially when you're trying to fight for leaderboard supremacy. Unfortunately, there are a few problems that keep this clever idea from achieving its full potential. The biggest issue is the length, which is a bit on the short side. I was able to beat the 37 races in a single sitting, which left me wanting more levels and locations. The good news is that once you've finished the four areas, you'll unlock the ability to play all of them again in a mirror mode where everything is reversed. That's fun, but I probably would have preferred a couple more stages. And it's not just the locations, because this game also needs more variety. I mean, it's not that the game actually needs more obstacles, but rather that they need to make better use of them. 
I was honestly surprised that the traffic wasn't a thing until the final few stages. And even then, it only pops up once or twice. Same with the hay bales and cows. Most of the challenge comes from figuring out where to draw the corners and staying within the lines. But I wish they would have incorporated these elements into more of the tracks. It's a big missed opportunity. It doesn't help that a few technical problems prevent the action from playing out exactly how you planned. I found that sometimes the cars would completely ignore the path that I drew and just go rogue, which usually meant doing donuts or just ramming straight into trees. The game would work perfectly one moment, but every time I retried the race without drawing a new line, the car would simply ignore my wishes and do its own thing. That was easy enough to work around, but the developer will definitely need to fix this bug. The good news is that even with some technical issues and a short campaign, I had a tremendous amount of fun playing Drawer. I think a lot of it came down to giving me an experience that I've never had before. It made me look at racing games in a different light and gave me hope that clever developers can still come up with something new and fresh for the genre. I also liked the look and especially the music. Let me tell you, the soundtrack is legitimately great. This is a fun little package that may be over too quickly, but that's not going to stop me from recommending it to anybody that likes to race or draw lines on graph paper. I've heard of driverless cars, but this is ridiculous. Drawer turns the predictable racing genre on its side by making it a game all about drawing lines and pre-planning. The result is a fun, albeit short, puzzle game with a great sense of style and an entertaining gimmick that is both clever and infuriating. It's a little light on content and some technical issues get in the way of a good time, but Drawer is the first big surprise of 2022. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is the strangest racing game that you've ever played? I mean, there are a lot of standard racers out there, but a few of them will leave you a scratch in your head. I'm excited to see your picks in the comments below. In other news, this was not the review I expected to post today. I was all set to talk about film mechanism, but I got swayed by the magic of drawer. Huzzah! I guess that means that you should expect the film mechanism review tomorrow, right? I guess we'll find out then. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.